Hudson County TV. I'm Fernando Uribe coming to you from City Hall as I bring you an exclusive interview with the new Director of Public Safety in Jersey City, James Shea. Through his very extensive background during his days employed with the New York Police Department, James Shea comes to Jersey City as the new Director of Public Safety. Hey, Mr. Shea, welcome to Jersey City. Appreciate a couple of minutes here on Hudson County TV. Just for our viewers um, who aren't familiar with your background, just succinctly give us something brief so uh, our viewers can, get again, get a sense of who James Shea is. Okay, sure. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me here. I grew up in Queens, New York. I joined the Marine Corps after high school, and when I came out of the Marines, I went to college for a couple of years, and then I went to into the NYPD, where I've been ever since. Uh, what are the advantages, do you think, of... of performing such a move of combining the police department and the fire department here in Jersey City? Well, the police department and the fire departments will remain separate entities operationally. However, yes, they will be combined into a single division answering to a director of public safety who answers to the mayor and the elected city council. The I think we've all seen over the last 10 years that more and more they are having to work together in a coordinated fashion, the police and firefighters, terrorist incidents, uh, natural disasters such as Tropical Storm Sandy. So. The idea is to put a single leadership into place or a single executive to make sure that we are giving the men and women who serve the fire department and the police department so well the mechanisms they need so that when they get to work together and they have to with these incidents, they can do the best job they possibly can. There ne there's never a problem with the working people. Police and fire work together every day in a multitude of different incidents. The problem is at the higher levels making sure that we've made it as easy as possible for them to accomplish their mission. Uh, what areas do you want to address immediately in Jersey that really require the most attention? Well, I've been going around to neighborhoods and introducing myself. I haven't started the job yet, so I, I want to thank everybody in Jersey City for allowing me to come out and be a guest at their community groups and at their churches and letting me introduce myself and hear their concerns to some extent. I think the first thing I need to do is to get out there into the community and into the police department and fire department and learn what is going on right now. The Jersey City Fire Department and the Jersey City Police Department have excellent reputations and I need to see what's happening now and then get out into the community and find out what the community thinks needs to be done. In line with, there's been a recent spate of shootings in Jersey City that has everybody concerned, but also quality of life concerns and youth concerns and anything else. Every community is different. There's no one size fits all approach that we can put on the entire Jersey City, especially a city as diverse as this one. We need to find out what the residents of Jersey City thinks needs to be done in their neighborhood, on their block, in their building. And ultimately, whether we succeed or not, they'll let us know. Director Shea, what elements of your employment with the NYPD really um, get you the best equipped at this job right now here in Jersey City, do you feel? Uh, if I had to pick one thing, I think I'd choose being a precinct commander for over six years in various diverse neighborhoods in the Bronx in New York. I served in neighborhoods that remind me of Jersey City with the diversity of population, with the different types of geography that's involved, and it's a challenge. And that's where I learned that the only way to determine whether you're doing a good job is to go out and find out from the people that you serve, and they will let you know. Now, uh, Commissioner Kelly in New York City has come under some scrutiny uh, regarding a stop and frisk policy that um, apparently he's in very much in favor of. Uh, is that something that you would want to implement here in Jersey City? I, I believe there's a lot of uh, apprehension around this issue, and I believe there are, there's a lot of misinformation going around about stop and frisk. The right of a police officer and the need for a police officer to stop someone to investigate criminal activity if they reasonably suspect it's occurring is essential to policing in a free society. And no reasonable person would expect a police officer to walk past possible c criminal activity and not investigate it. Uh, it has been turned into, the discussion about it has been turned into a discussion where it seems that people think that police officers are going out and stopping people just to try to intimidate them or to try and impose their will on a neighborhood. And that is not the fact. Police officers need to investigate crime. It's what we pay them to do. If they reasonably suspect a crime is occurring, they need to investigate it as expeditiously as possible. Uh, the investigation and, the st and if they need to stop someone should be done with as much courtesy as possible under the circumstances and they should make the effort to explain to the person why they were stopped so everybody understands it. But you can't police in a free, so in a free society without it. Well, Director Shea, again, I, I appreciate that clarity. I know many of our viewers, I think, will appreciate it also because you really, really succinctly broke it down for us. So I do appreciate that. One last question here before we let you go. 
Um, many of our viewers on Hudson County TV have expressed a concern about, like anything else in government, whether it be federal, state, or at the local level, about the potential for bureaucracy being problematic here with something like this, not necessarily the creation of this department, the Department of Public Safety, uh, but your job in having to deal with the bureaucracy that comes with dealing with two very important departments in, in a major city. What assurances can you give the, the residents in Jersey City that um, the problems that are associated normally with bureaucracy are not going to be a part of this? Well, we'll have to see what bureaucracies exist. Mo bureaucracies tend to grow over time as people address problems, and sometimes they don't stay up to the at times. And a bureaucracy or a position that may have made sense 20 years ago when it was instituted or a time ago when it was instituted no longer makes sense. And you have to take a look at all that and make sure that we don't have layers of bureaucracy which are actually making it harder for the men and women on the street doing their job to accomplish their mission. I'm a firm believer that it's very easy to blame the people who are actually working, the police officers, the firefighters, if something goes wrong. But in reality, you usually have to look much further up the chain to determine whether those police officers and firefighters were actually given the direction and the tools they need to accomplish their mission. So if something goes wrong or if we have too much bureaucracy choking up the chain, we'll have to look in a mirror first at the executive level before we start looking down. Uh, Director, also, just one last question just dawned on me also right now. I know I spoke with the mayor last week. Um, mentioning a new police class coming into Jersey City. Uh, do you foresee an additional amount of manpower coming to Jersey City? Again, it's a very diverse city, it's a very large city uh, scale-wise. Uh, do you anticipate even more hirings right now? Uh, I agree with you, Jersey City is a diverse city, very large city, very exciting city, a lot happening here. I call it a dynamic city as you walk around. A lot of construction, a lot of different languages being spoken. You can tell a lot is going on. Uh, it's exciting to hire new police officers. There were just some retirements, so you need them to replace them, but it's always a great time. Just today, we swore in three police officers that were laterals from the Sheriff's Department into Jersey City. As far as whether I anticipate more, again, I need to look at the police department and any business or any government entity, the first thing you should do when you have challenges is make sure that you're already using the resources you have to the utmost. That's what you owe your taxpayers or shareholders if it was a personal, a private business. So that's the first thing we're going to do is look and make sure that we're already using the existing resources to the best extent possible before we go asking for more. And then if the challenges are being, then we'll report to the mayor and the elected officials who ultimately make those decisions. It's important to remember that uh, it's a zero sum game to some extent. Every dollar spent on public safety is not spent somewhere else and those decisions are best made by the people elected to make them. Director, again, welcome to Jersey City. Thank you for a few minutes here to introduce yourself to Jersey City residents and most importantly uh, for, for providing a very uh, good amount of information to uh, Jersey City residents here on Hudson County TV. Thank you again, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. For more programming, one on one exclusive interviews such as the one you view today, please go to HudsonCountyTV.com. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And as always, stay classy.